Hi everybody, and welcome to another video. Here's a sketch of a simple musical theme consisting of a melody and some root position chords. This is a great example of something that a student might send to me, asking for advice on how to improve their composition. One of the first things I'll ask that student is how should this music sound? And the student usually doesn't know what I mean, or they'll say, well, it's just a sketch. Then I might say, well, yeah, I realize it's a sketch, but still, how should it sound? Other than the notes and rhythms, there's really nothing telling the musician how to play this. So then they might add in some more information like a tempo marking and maybe some dynamics, often mezzo piano or mezzo forte, and then they'd play the theme and it would usually sound pretty good. But then afterwards I might ask them the same question from before. How do you want this to sound? Or better put, what emotion or mood are you trying to create? In this video, I'd like to discuss a few ways in which you can add character to your theme or composition. But first, I want to mention I just released a free six-hour course where I orchestrate a theme in the style of Joe Hisaishi using Dorico. The link to that is in the description box below. I'd love for you to check it out. All right, so I've been really enjoying the new Lord of the Rings Rings of Power show, and I like the music a lot. I've been a fan of Barry McCreary for a long time, and I absolutely love his score to God of War. Something I noticed about the Rings of Power score, which was also the case with Howard Shore's Lord of the Rings score, is how the musical themes match the characters on screen so effectively. There are a number of ways McCreary accomplishes this, and so today I'll look at two themes from the score and how he adds character to the music. I'll start with an excerpt from the cue Nori Brandyfoot. It's entirely possible that McCreary's first sketch for this theme looks something like this. I don't know him personally, so I don't know his process, but it's conceivable that he might start with a sketch like this. It's a nice four measure phrase, nice melody and harmony with a modal feel, but it doesn't really tell me anything about the character of Nori, which you could argue is the whole point of writing a theme in a score. To some extent, it lacks personality and emotion, just like that theme I presented in the beginning of the video. But McCreary's actual theme looks just a bit different, and there are a bunch of compositional decisions that make this music come alive. First, the instrumentation. He chose to place the melody in what sounds like an Irish whistle of some kind, one octave higher in register. Register seems like a trivial thing, but so many beginner composers seem to get stuck using a narrow range centered around middle C and never ask themselves, what would that sound like up the octave, or even two octaves? And once McCreary picks an instrument for the melody, he can then compose idiomatically for that instrument. In other words, what kind of music is performed on an Irish whistle, and what are some unique things about that instrument and the sounds that it can produce? Folk instrumental music tends to embrace ornamentation and inflection, and it's a good idea to become familiar with the types of traditional ornaments and performance practices of that instrument in a particular genre. It's possible McCreary just handed the music to a performer and then that performer, probably a world-class Irish whistle player, added in the ornaments as they saw fit. That's entirely possible, but if so, that's a luxury that most of us don't have. And composing specifically to the instrument's strengths and weaknesses is always a good thing. However the process unfolded, McCreary added in these ornaments and inflections and then slurs to help give this melody more character. Then of course there's the accompaniment, McCreary's features more traditional instruments, including some type of hammered string instrument and some type of harp, and some additional percussion instruments as well. The accompaniment features rhythms and textures that are idiomatic and stylistically appropriate and interesting for those instruments. Here's just a reduction of that accompaniment with the melody, and this is what it sounds like in the actual score. I'll just play these four measures, but definitely go listen to the full thing if you get a chance. The other cue that I want to look at from McCreary's score is called Casa Doom. And like I did before, this is a stripped down version of that theme with the melody placed in the treble clef staff. And again, I'm just showing four measures of a much longer cue. I'm guessing the first thing McCreary did to make sure this fit the scene 
was to place this theme registrally much lower, with instruments that best fit this range, like trombones and low strings, and he uses a male chorus on the melody as well. I want to look at just the accompaniment for a second in low celli and basses. Here's what it sounds like in the recording. There's such a heaviness to that sound. It fits so well within the scene and captures Casa Doom and its inhabitants so well, in my opinion. But in order to achieve that sound from your celli and bass section, you'd need to include more information in your score. Some composers will simply write a word above or below the music, and the performers will then interpret that word or instruction as a specific playing technique. You might specify an articulation. In this case, I might add the tenuto staccato marking to get the emphasized heavy short notes. Additionally, I might add a bow technique indicator, letting the performer know to use the frog of the bow to produce a heavier sound. You could argue that's more of an orchestration decision than a compositional one, but I think the point I'm trying to make here is that it's never too early to think about this level of detail. That's one of the keys to adding character to your music, having a goal in mind for a particular emotion or character, then knowing how to achieve that sound by using particular notes, rhythms, instruments, articulations, and a number of other musical parameters. I obviously don't know exactly how this music was notated, I can only make an educated guess, but there's a good chance McCreary was thinking something similar. Interestingly enough, on the melody, the trombones have slightly different articulations than the chorus. The trombones have staccatos at times when the singers are singing either legatos or tenudos. Sometimes playing with combinations of different articulations can allow for even more possibilities. So returning to this first theme for a minute. Even before orchestrating, I like to have an idea of the instrument, what kinds of sounds, rhythms, and ornaments would work best for that instrument, and how the overall texture might end up sounding. This level of detail early on in the compositional process will really make the final results stand out. And I think you'll be amazed at just how versatile a single sketch or idea can be. I can make this theme sound a bit like Nori's theme. Or perhaps something much darker. And for those of you composing or orchestrating in the DAW, sometimes this means grabbing those additional articulations that come with your library and not just relying entirely on sustain, legato, or staccato patches. More on this in upcoming videos, but that's all for this one. I hope you've enjoyed this video and remember to grab my free course by clicking the link below. See you next time.